Ask the Messengers, the program that deals with substance abuse, real people telling real stories. Hosted by Pastor Lester Lewis, co-host Charlize Wilkerson and Leroy Carey. Produced by David Humphreys. Where there is addiction, there is a chance for recovery. We're trying to help save lives on Ask the Messengers. Today on Ask the Messengers, we celebrate one year of being on television with our show. Our first annual celebration took place on November 5th, 2017 at the St. Regis Hotel, Midtown Detroit, Michigan, and of course we brought our cameras along to capture this milestone event. Parts of our 15 episodes filled the big screen all night. We had a panel discussion, an awards presentation, a two-piece band, and gospel singers. And we had some good food to eat. Not to mention that we celebrated our executive producer George Page's birthday that night. Our street reporter talked with some of our guests from the recovery community to get some real stories from real people. And it's all here on this episode of Ask the Messengers. Our street reporter, LaShawn Battle, had the opportunity to speak with some of our guests who are recovering addicts and found that their drug use started at extremely early ages, and one started at birth. When I came home from the hospital in 1954, my mother was told to put four rolls whiskey in my formula. So from the age of zero to four, every bottle I ever had, I had alcohol in it. So then, and then I stopped when I was weaned off the bottle and I started back using when I was 11 years old. I smoked my first joint of marijuana. Well, I started using when I was nine years old. My mom, my biological mom had just died. And it was like my world just, collapse so you know parents who had parties all the drinking going on I'm the kid down there in the pajamas like you see on TV sipping out all the cups and giving the adults drinks as well but while they weren't looking I was drinking more than they were and it just continued I started using when I was nine years old 11 and how did you get a hold to it? Uh, some friends in the neighborhood, they had older brothers and sisters, and I guess they were using me for a guinea pig to try some marijuana. And uh, I smoked that first joint and was wilding out. When I was 12 years old. At the time when I was 12, my father used to molest me. So I started drinking alcohol because I didn't know how to tell my mother. I was 14 years old, but I smoked, first smoked um, crack cocaine. Well, we hear the stories. At first, it was fun. I, um, uh, alcohol is a drug. I started drinking young. Being uh, my dad owned the beer and wine store, so we drank what was in the store. I smoked weed. Uh, then I started um, using powder cocaine, masculine and all different kinds of drugs going through high school. Um, it was just something to do, trying to get in where I fit in. 18. I started smoking crack cocaine approximately around the age of 21. Our panel was staffed with several experts in the recovery field along with our two co-hosts. The panel discussion was led by our host, Pastor Lester Lewis. Co-host Charlize Wilkerson told of her struggles with drug addiction and what the recovery community meant to her. I've got one good job, I've got one home group, I've got one sponsor, and I've got an array of recovering addicts and people who bore me and people who are got my back. And that's what recovery means to me. Dr. Trent told us how he had graduated from med school and started his practice before ever realizing that recovery from addiction was possible. Uh, uh, my come from a family that had a lot of addiction in the family. And uh, for almost all my life, you know, when I encountered somebody who had an addiction, or, you know, I was like, okay, well, that's that. You know, once you get an addiction in my family, there were no recovering people in my family. There were people who went to prison and died. That's all, that's all that I had. But then, you know, I was really kind of blessed to get involved through uh, my work in psychology with people in recovery, you know. And I discovered that 
people do recover and people can recover. And you know, I think there's a lot of people like me out there that don't know that that is possible, you know. And, you know, to me it's a miracle and I really have been blessed to work in this field and to see, you know, the heroism of people that actually do recover. In addition to explaining that drug addiction can become a brain disease, Dr. Ify gave us three important takeaways. There are three things I want everybody here to take home. One, substance abuse or addiction is a brain disease. It's a disease, that's number one. Number two, we have to change the way we treat those of us in the medical profession. Things have to change. You don't call it a, a, a 800 number or call your friend and tell them you need help and you're told that okay come in two days time no we must figure a way that if somebody picks up the phone and makes that decision i need help and i need help now that it doesn't take more than an hour or two for that person to get help because that's when they need that help. If you wait for too long, they, they start having withdrawal, they're in pain, they can't tolerate it. It's the, Ill, the, the feeling of sickness that make people go back. Because at that point, they're no longer enjoying it. It's that I don't want to feel sick. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to throw up. I don't want to ache. Therefore, help must be provided. We have to come to a place where if somebody calls for help within an hour or two, they're getting professional help that they need to get to recover. And the last thing is that there's no uh, provision of how those of us that are treating uh, uh, people in uh, addiction how we can help caregivers, families, friends to support them because they need to be trained, they need to be there for them. No matter how many times they fail, they need that help. If it takes 100 times, we'll do it the 100 times that it takes to get them back. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Still to come, more from our first anniversary celebration and more real people telling real stories. Welcome Judge Mathis, thanks for coming to share an important message with the Wayne County taxpayers. Well thank you for allowing me to help. You know, most of my life I was a resident of Wayne County and so I'm here to help because Treasurer Sabri wants to work with Wayne County homeowners to keep families in their homes and prevent foreclosure. 
If you're having trouble making your property tax payments, let us know. We have many resources to help. Take the first step towards staying in your home by going down to the Wayne County Treasurer's Office on the fifth floor of the International Building in Greektown. Stop by today to learn more about our payment plans and especially the newly extended interest rate reduction program. Already in the payment plan? It's important you stay in good standing. Making property tax payments is now easier than ever. We have placed payment kiosks in Rite Aid stores and community centers across the county. We've also added kiosks in our offices. Contact us at 313-224-5990 or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com. When an auto accident interrupts your peace of mind, your family, your life, the law law firm is the only law firm that will truly help you. They treated me like family and communicated every detail of my case. Not only are they here to fight, the law law firm is here to help you. I'm Sherry Lobb of the Lobb Law Firm. Helping you in an auto accident is our number one priority. Call today for a free consultation. 855 help you. Looking for a rewarding career in healthcare? Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Become a certified nurse and assistant by taking our three week program or enroll to become a hemodialysis technician in our 10 week program. We offer day and evening classes, free childcare, ages six weeks to five years old. Payment plans and financial aid available. Plus, we are a Michigan Works affiliate. Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Area code 313 341 7512. Your new career begins at Odyssey. Hi, my name is Brenda Owens. I work at Green for Hair Collection, and I love doing hair. I've been doing it for almost 30 years now, actually. And I do a little bit of everything. This style right here is a uh, pin curl. This is my weekly client, Lanise, short and sassy. She just got a fresh haircut last week. The name of the salon is Greenfield Hair Collection. We're located on Greenfield between Otter Drive and Curtis. I'm on the second level. My name is Brenda. My phone number is 313-729-8194. Give me a call. I love what I do. Papillon Taylor offers tuxedo rentals, same-day prom wedding dresses, and mink leather alterations. Papillon Taylor also provides organic dry cleaning and a convenient drive through pickup. Located on Southfield between 9 and 10 Mile Road, click on PapillonTaylor.com or call 248-557-6699. With many attendees in long-term recovery, Ask the Messengers ask the question, what led you to recovery? I had been gone from home for like 40 days, and it was on Mother's Day. And I was beating up myself in an abandoned it was an abandoned house, and my wife knew where I was at, and she pulled up. She gave me $20. And I felt so bad, you know, and that didn't even stop me from using. And I scuffled my way out with that $20 and went and got out with it. And I felt so bad in doing that, you know, but what really got me to come to recovery was I actually looked at myself in a full-length mirror. I happened to be taking a shower over someone's house, and I looked at myself. And I had to tell myself that this is, this is not me. I had to do something. And I went to a treatment. And um, started going to meetings, um, AA meetings. And um, the place was just so welcoming. But I took it for granted because I was 18 years old, going on 19, and I, I really didn't understand the essence of um, staying clean and, and not drinking. You know, I thought that once I, as the literature said, I thought I had a handle it on it and that I was okay after a year or two. I stayed clean for like two years and then started drinking with friends at work again. And before I know it, I was right back smoking and drinking. And then I started popping pills. What brought you to recovery? The last year of recovery. I just uh, said that uh, I grew up in a home where both parents would sit at the table and the kids would sit around it and we would have dinner. At the end, I was working at a Coney Island, cleaning up the restaurant, 
And when I would get my food, which was part of my pay, I would take my food outside and sit on a rail next to a dumpster. I would not even eat in the restaurant anymore. I got so used to living like an animal. And so I was more comfortable eating my food next to a garbage can. Two brothers died in nine months. I found myself back in prison facing life with two drug-related charges. And uh, I just, one night I started crying because I knew that something was wrong with me and I couldn't fix it. So I asked God if he'll take the taste out of my mouth and the desire of my heart, I'll do my part. What brought you to recovery? The drug stopped working. So what brought you to recovery? The court. Uh, last case I caught, the judge told me, get clean or go to jail. It took me six more months to finally get it, but I was tired of jail. I had been in jail. I was in, those five years, I was in jail more than I was out. So I was tired. I was done. It was God that kept pulling me out. You know, I kept putting a question mark where he kept putting a period and I would say I'm done and then it, it only took one small thing, either it was a happy time or a sad time, you know, uh, to take me back to using. But uh, since I've been in recovery, you know, uh, and I, I found a new life, uh, I, I did a, a total 360, you know, uh, I did a lot of, a lot of step work uh, to get in touch with me and to find out what was the core of my disease? What kept me going back and forth to using? And I found that I had not dealt with the abandonment issues that I suffered as a child, watching watching my mother use and not know that she was using, watching her leave out in the middle of the night and, and I would be awake crying and she was going to prostitute, you know. Uh, she was actually murdered, you know, uh, on a stroll, being picked up by someone and, uh, I, I never knew. I never knew until recovery, you know, is when it finally hit me what she was doing, you know. And so uh, I just made a decision to stay on, on this side, you know. And since then, life has been uh, bountiful. And, and, and not I'm not speaking money-wise. I'm speaking spirit-wise. You know, just yesterday, I was with a friend who's going through, and she want to know how I could be so happy even in my circumstances, you know, and, uh, and, and I had to tell her that's only through faith and through favor, you know, uh, that God has placed upon my life. And uh, I was just, I just gave a testimony today in church that even in a storm, I've learned how to dance in the rain. Stay tuned for more of Ask the Messengers. Hi, my name is Brenda Owens. I work at Green for Hair Collective, and I love doing hair. I've been doing it for almost 30 years now, actually. And I do a little bit of everything. This style right here is a uh, pin curl. This is my weekly client, Lanise, short and sassy. She just got a fresh haircut last week. The name of the salon is Greenfield Hair Collective. We're located on Greenfield between Otter Drive and Curtis. I'm on the second level. My name is Brenda. My phone number is 313-729-8194. Give me a call. I love what I do. Papillon Taylor offers tuxedo rentals, same-day prom wedding dresses, and mink leather alterations. Papillon Taylor also provides organic dry cleaning and a convenient drive through pickup. Located on Southfield between 9 and 10 Mile Road, click Audio on papillontaylor.com or call 248-557-6699. Looking for a rewarding career in healthcare? Advantage Living Center has partnered with Odyssey Educational Center. Upon completion of your CNA program, immediate employment is available. AMG has homes on the east side and west side of Michigan, as far as Armado and Battle Creek. So come be a part of our team. Enroll now at Odyssey Educational Center. Become a certified nurse and assistant by taking our three-week program or enroll to become a hemodialysis technician in our 10-week program. Your new career begins at Odyssey. Thank you for calling the Lab Law Firm. Injured, we can help. Call the Lab Law Firm today. Call for free consultation. 855-HELP-YOU. Millions of dollars have been recovered. No recovery, no fee. Over 40 years experience. Don't trust the insurance adjuster. The insurance adjuster works for the insurance company, but we work for you. Call today, 855-HELP-YOU. That's the Law Law Firm. 
And remember, your choice of lawyer makes a big difference. Hi, I'm Ashley Greaser, the office manager at Premier Supportive Services. Here at Premier, we offer a variety of services that include residential service, 24-hour residential, attended care, semi-independent, as well as many other services. So if you know of anyone that has been involved in a car accident, we are located at 17555 James Cousin, Suite 2. Or you can give us a call at 313-345-3668. Executive producer George Page gave special thanks to our sponsors and presented a few awards to individuals who have contributed to Ask the Messengers during our first year on the air. Charlize Wilkinson received an award. Leroy Carey received an award. LaShawn Battle received an award. Andre Johnson received an award. Dr. Calvin Trent received an award. Pastor Lester Lewis received an award. In most cases, the best advice for a recovering addict comes from another recovering addict. Here's some advice we captured. Uh, I would say that uh, using is not worth your life. Um, everybody don't make it out. Uh, I know a lot of people that have used, a lot of people that used with me that are dead. And uh, it's just not worth it. It's a great world and a great life out here waiting for you to make the decision to stay clean and uh, uh, to stay clean and, and, and prosper. It would be to tell them that, you know, we tell ourselves that we're only hurting ourselves, but we're not only hurting ourselves, we're hurting the people that love us too. And it's not worth it. I honestly would say don't take what we think um, as a gateway drug for granted because a drug is a drug is a drug whether it's marijuana, alcohol, pills, heroin, cocaine. Um, if you know that you um, are a person that can't do one of anything, don't start anything. Um, marijuana is real. It, it, it can kill your brain cells so don't pick up nothing. Find other avenues, counseling, therapy, somebody to talk to before you pick up. If there was something out there that I could say to help anyone, it would be, please do not pick up the first one. Just because you see a friend or a loved one that you're close to doing it, don't mean it's for you to do it. Please do not pick up the first one. It doesn't take but one. That's all it takes is one, and it can ruin the rest of your life. Find yourself. Don't try to be, do what everyone do, uh, like a stigma. People hang around people who they think are having fun. Find what you like to do. You know, um, my biggest fear, and I, 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 I guess it's because I don't want my kids to do what I do, but I know that they know the right thing to do. Cause I have a set of twins in a high school and people, them kids in high school can be mean, but um, just be yourself. You know, don't try to be with the crowd uh, and be yourself, you know. I would say, say no. Say enough is enough. Your life is worth so much more. Being clean, it's like from being an addict and being clean, it's a whole different world out here. And trust me, if God did it for me, 
he definitely can do it for you. What I would tell you is that uh, I started using from peer pressure. I didn't want to appear to be stupid or square. So I wanted to be accepted by others. And that's what really got me involved in drugs at 11. And I would say, just know that if they don't accept you the way you are, that you shouldn't have to involve yourself in an activity that is gonna be detrimental to your health and your life. Don't do it. If you could say something to help someone out there, what would you say? I would tell them to always be you, be yourself no matter what. You can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Just don't pick up no matter what. For the person that you is watching this that might know you, that might want to try what you tried, what would you tell them to help save them? Easy dub it. Give, give yourself a break, man. Give yourself a break. Give it 90 days. If it don't work in 90 days, if you can't stay clean after 90 days, I give you a thousand dollars. Give yourself a chance, man. This this life, this other side, you know. I mean, it comes it comes with a price tag, though. It's not it's not free, even though it's freely given to you. I mean, it seems like a, a heck of an oxymoron, you know. But you have to put some work in, you know. You it's an inside job. Can't nobody just give you recovery, you know. You you have to put some work in. You have to. You, you have to work the steps. You got to get a sponsor. If you could say something to help somebody out there, what would you say? Never give up on life. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to get knocked down. But you got to find the strength within yourself to get up and keep going. You know. I think the most I think, the, I think we do a lot of damage to ourselves and giving up on ourselves. Yeah. I say as long as you don't give up on you, that you stand a chance. You've been watching Ask the Messengers. To watch more episodes, go to the Ask the Messengers channel on YouTube or to our website, askthemessengers.org or .com. And please like and follow us on Facebook. We also invite you to attend our 12-step program meetings every Wednesday, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. and every Friday, 10 a.m. to noon at the Greater Love Christian Center, 18400 Schaefer in Detroit, Michigan. For help, contact the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Helpline at 1-800-662-4357 or visit their website, www. S-A-M-H-S-A dot gov. Special thanks to all our guests who came forward with their real stories in hopes of helping someone else. And thank you for watching.